Hi, I'm Pastor Robert Case. Welcome to a lecture on science and the Bible. Astronomy is one of the hardest topics for Christians to reconcile with the Bible's teaching of a recent creation by God. Textbooks, journals, and the news media teach that the universe started about 15 billion years ago with the Big Bang. From this, all the stars, planets, and life evolved into existence over the billions of years by natural processes. But did you know none of that was ever observed? No one saw the Big Bang, and no one has ever seen a star, a planet, or life evolve into existence. It's all a remarkable story to do away with the need for a Creator God. Let's join Mike Riddle, who has spoken in hundreds of churches, schools, universities, homeschool conventions, and at NASA, as he speaks about the scientific evidence that supports the biblical truth, in the beginning God created all things, which include all the stars, the planets, and all life. Astronomy and the Bible. Our roadmap through this talk will be this. First of all, the two models. What does the creation model have to teach about the origin of the universe? And what does the evolution model teach about the origin of the universe? Then we'll talk about evidences for age. How old is this universe? Then we'll look at the origin of stars. Then scientific evidence and the Big Bang. How does the Big Bang compare against the observable science? Then we'll end it with something called the Bible and Big Bang cosmology. So let's start with describing the two models. The first model I'm going to talk about is evolution. I'm going to lump into there something called theistic evolution. Now, theistic evolution, there are several different forms. One is the day-age theory. That is the idea that God did use the Big Bang to start everything off. The universe is billions of years old, and the days of creation are long, indefinite periods of time. Then there's the gap theory, which puts billions of years of time, geologic time, in between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. Then there's the popular progressive creationist movement model, which teaches again that God used the Big Bang and that the days of creation were long and definite periods of time that overlapped each other. Now all those models, evolution and theistic evolution, all believe in the Big Bang. They believe the universe is 12 to 15 billion years old, and they believe that stars formed by natural processes. Then there's the other model, which I call the biblical model. The biblical model states that God spoke the universe into existence all by his great power. He did not use the Big Bang. The Bible teaches that the universe is young and that God created all the stars and they did not evolve by natural processes. So we have a difference between the two models. But are they really that different? One of the main differences tends to be the age issue. Evolution believes that this universe must be billions of years old and that there was a Big Bang that started everything off. The proponents of the biblical model teach that the universe has to be less than the required age for evolution. In other words, called the young Earth model. Now again, are these two models really that different? What are the implications of accepting the Big Bang model as part of in the beginning God created. Well, first of all, we need to understand the Big Bang is associated with long ages and stellar formation by natural processes. What does this mean if we put that in the Bible? Well, from a biblical perspective, it means this. First of all, God's creation was not six literal days, but long indefinite periods of time. It means that in Genesis 1.31, when God pronounces his entire creation very good, it does not mean very good. It means maybe sort of good because there had been billions of years of death and decay going on before God finished his creation. It also means that there would have been death before sin because what was going on again for those billions of years before Adam and Eve came on board? There had been billions of years of death and decay. That's what the fossil record is. It also means if this earth is billions of years old, the flood was not a worldwide flood. It has to be some local regionalized flood. The Big Bang model also would mean that in Colossians 1.16, when God said he created all things, the word all doesn't mean all. And finally, we have to look at what do the heavens declare if God did not make the stars. So there are some tremendous implications of putting the Big Bang and long ages into the Bible. So let's evaluate the evidence. When we look at textbooks and we look at scientific journals, we see a pattern in all our textbooks. We see they all 
teach the Big Bang as a fact. Billions of years ago. They all teach that distant starlight would take billions of years to reach us, therefore this universe must be billions of years old. But the question is, are we being given all the evidence? Now, we can test this accuracy and validity of each of these models, creation and evolution, by actually examining all the data. Now, what we're going to see here as we go through some of this data is evidence against one position will be support for the other position. In other words, if we find scientific evidence that supports this Earth and universe is young, that is evidence against the evolution model of the Big Bang and Long Ages. However, if we find evidence that says this universe has to be old, then that would be evidence against a young Earth and young universe model. So let's look at some of these evidences. And our first one is called the recession of the moon. Now, the Earth has a mass, and it pulls on our moon. And the moon, likewise, has a mass, and it pulls back on the Earth. So we have this tugging and pulling. And by that tugging and pulling going on between the Earth and the moon, it causes that moon to slowly spiral away from the Earth. Now, is that a problem? Well, not really, because the moon has been measured to be receding from us about four centimeters a year, a little less than two inches a year. Now, is that a problem with the tides that we have? Well, let's go back in time and see how this might affect the age issue. If we were to go back about a thousand years, that would mean the moon is about 125 feet closer to us. Is that a problem? Well, not at all. Insignificant as far as any tidal actions or any earth actions. How about if we go back a million years? Well, that would put the moon about 28.4 miles closer to the Earth. Again, insignificant. No real problems there. If we go back about 10 million years, that would put the moon about 284 miles closer to the Earth. Again, not that much significance, considering the moon is about 250,000 miles away from the Earth. If we go back 100 million years, now the moon is about 2,840 miles closer to the Earth. We might have some significance there, not much. But if we go back a billion years, that puts the moon about 28,400 miles closer to the Earth. Now we might have some significance in the tidal actions. But if we go back 1.4 billion years, that puts the moon in contact with the Earth. Now we have a real problem. You see, if we look at this line, looking at this chart here, on the left-hand side, we have the distance from the Earth. On the bottom, we have the time. And this acceleration of the moon, the moon receding from the Earth, is based on its proximity to the Earth. The closer it is, the faster it is receding from us. So if we were to go back 1.4 billion years, we see that the moon is actually in contact with the Earth. And it's receding from the Earth very rapidly. Until about 1 billion years ago, we see this line kind of tends to go very linear. So 1.4 billion years is a maximum. We can't have a solar system that old based on our current calculations of the moon receding from the Earth about four centimeters a year. That is evidence that this solar system, this Earth-Moon relationship, cannot be as old as the evolutionist model. So evidence number one for a younger solar system than evolution requires. Well, let's go to another evidence, comets. Now, first of all, what are comets? Well, they're nothing more than great, big, dirty ice cubes out there. Big, dirty ice cubes. Now, if our solar system is billions of years old, there's a problem with the comets we see out there circling around our sun solar system. See, we have comets dividing up into two periods. We are called long-period comets and short-period comets. Now, long-period comets are comets that circle around our sun about every 200 years or longer. And short-period comets are those comets that circle around our sun, our solar system, every 200 years or less. Now, here's the situation. As those comets circle around our sun, being a big, dirty ice cube, they tend to lose some of their mass. After so many revolutions around our sun, our solar system, they would have lost all their mass if this universe, if this solar system is four and a half billion years old. We should have no short period nor long period comets. So what is the solution by the evolutionist community? Well, the evolutionists postulate that there's this ring of comets so far out there, well beyond Pluto, that nobody can see it. It is called the Oort cloud. 
the Oort cloud. And every once in a while, one of these comets in that Oort cloud somehow comes in and starts circling around our sun. And that is why we still have long period comets. Now, there's some problems with the Oort cloud. One, it's never been observed. 